All right, I picked up this surplus trailer. It's a M116A3 chassis. Um, this is what the MEP generators came mounted on. Uh, it was in pretty good shape. Got it for $550. A couple things are rust. Latch was missing. Uh, pin was missing. I had one laying around that fit in there. Um, but what this video is going to be about is converting over pretty much everything on here to make it so you can tow it with a regular truck. I got my Super Duty over there. Um, because obviously, you know, here's your uh, military harness. And it's got all kinds of pins for the blackout lights. And um, all the military stuff is 24 volt. So I'm converting it over to 12 volt. I'm going to put a 7 pin adapter up front. Um, I'm going to go over the part numbers that I ordered and uh, where I got them from. And yeah. So right here is probably one of the most common things on these trailers that's missing. It's your little piece that latches in right here. This is the safety chain for it for cranking this up and down. Um, part numbers out there. You know, I wanted to do this as cheap as possible, but also have the proper stuff. So I found this, which is a fifth wheel, like landing gear crank from E-Trailer. And the part number. Oh, got it upside down. R V L G dash H D L. Um, basically what it does fits on right there so you can crank it up and down that's what it's supposed to simple fix um, you can just store this in the toolbox or I thought about cutting it down to make it a little bit shorter but it'll work because the trailer is 24 volt for the military you got to get 12 volt um, lamps for the back I wanted to get LED for both, but apparently for this size 97, which is one of the ones that you need, they don't have LEDs. And then for the other size, 1156, they do. I just got white. If you wanted to, I suppose you could get red, but I just got white. All right, it's pretty straightforward. It's a flathead screwdriver. Um, all the screws are captive, so you can just loosen them, they won't come all the way out. All right, you can see I got it off. It's pretty obvious which bulb is gonna be which. Careful, these are all like, these are mounted loose in here on purpose, so there's not as much shock on these bulbs. Uh, there's little rubber gaskets and stuff in here. All right, got him in. I'm gonna leave the cover off and back my truck and stuff up now. In case you were wondering in here, these are your blackout type lights. These are probably infrared LEDs. I could, I could probably take these out and use them when I'm doing night vision stuff, but I'm just gonna leave them in here. I don't really care for now. This is the seven pin wire I got for doing the conversion for my truck from E-Trailer. Uh, it's like the Mighty Cord seven way RV style. The part number is A. 10-7W6. Uh, really heavy duty cable, nice seven pin connector and enough wires to be able to connect more than enough for what we need on here. 
All right, first thing I'm starting with to work on is doing the uh, wire pigtail switch over. These are 5 sixteenths. On mine, there's only these two. I already got them loose. And this will give you access to where the uh, pigtail attaches to the wires going into the trailer. Pull it off. And then you can see each one of the wires, which is the easiest one to look at here. This one, they correlate with a number. And those numbers um, in the wire diagram I'll show, share in a little bit, are like your blackout lights, your regular tail lights, your turn signal and all that stuff. Uh, these fittings right here haven't even started yet, but pretty sure they just pull apart. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to be able to do it one hand at all. Splice back in and let you know. All right, so I pulled it apart. And I don't know if this is what it's supposed to do, but it's kind of like a really fancy butt connector. And it's on there pretty good. I didn't bring like pliers or anything, but... Um, before I go any farther, what my plan is just to completely disconnect all the stuff from the pigtail coming off. Um, as I disconnect each one, the numbers I showed you earlier, it's going to be upside down with me recording this way. You want to make sure all these numbers match up. So that way you know that it was working properly when you got it. And then do some inspection. Like see, I found this wire is a little frayed right here. So I'll put some heat shrink on that and make sure it's all good. Um, after I take all this apart, I'll pick the video back up. All right, what I decided I'm gonna do after looking at this a little bit is uh, on your wires going out to your lights and stuff on the trailer, on that side of where these connectors are, I'm just gonna cut behind each one of them because the connectors don't really matter to me. For what I'm going to do, I'm going to end up just using butt connectors or something anyway. So I'm going to do that, disconnect the ground, which is right here, and then there's a couple screws and stuff, and I'm going to undo it. That whole pigtail will come off, and I might try to like sell it on eBay to someone who needs it. Cheap Harbor Freight stuff, at least it was free. All right, so these are 14 gauge wires. I trimmed them all, got them ready. Repaired, you know, put a little uh, shrink wrap over the one that was frayed. I moved all the numbers so that I could see them. Um, put the screws back in from the stuff I took out here because I'll probably use them for the harness that I'm gonna put on. I also took off the little like connector pieces, no need. I'll just sell them with with this kit. And yeah, so the next thing I'm gonna do is get the other harness ready and I'm gonna go get the wire numbers and explain which one goes where. All right, so I had to come back, open all this up, and redo it because the issue I had on my trailer, things were all crossed up. In all right, so when I tested the lamps, I didn't go through the entire procedure like I should have. And you can see I have my left signal on in the truck, and the left lamp's dead. Go to the right, they're both flashing. Turn them off, put on hazard. They're both flashing. So, got some troubleshooting to do. It's getting late. I'm stopping for today. The reason being is the information I got was for if you're wiring this end to a four pin trailer harness. Since I'm using a seven, some of these are different. Um, and I figured out what they were, um, at least for my truck. I can't assume that it would be any different, but 
Anyways, what I came up with was your green wire coming off this is gonna go to 21. Your brown wire right here is going to go to 22,460. You don't use your yellow wire with a seven pin. You use your red wire and that goes to 2261 and your white wire still goes to the ground. So I'm gonna put a blade connector on this, just tape this one off and put it all back the way that I had it. All right, so to just go over it one more time and to double check myself, the green wire goes to number 21 on the existing trailer wires. The brown wire goes to 22,460 on the trailer wires. The red wire goes to 22,461. Now before I go any farther, I'm gonna do what I should have done. I'm gonna go back my truck up, hook everything up and test it. Topo check. All right, left turn signal. Right turn signal. Hazards. All right, turn them off. Brake. All right. So they work. Found the problem. All right, I finished troubleshooting my problem. 12 volt bulbs and everything are in. Um, so I'm ready to just wrap up. Um, put a zip tie to just hold all this together. I disconnected the ground so I could wrap all this up uh, nice and watertight. Um, got some 5 8 padded wire holders. Put one here, put one there. And then I use some channel lock, squeeze this tighter so it'll hold it in place. And I'm gonna use this bungee cord. <laughs> Not on there very good right now, but I'm gonna use the bungee cord just to hold it down similar to the military did with their big 12 pin connection or whatever. I realized when I was putting this cover back on, um, both the bolts at the bottom were broken off, so I made uh, just used the self-tapping screw right in the middle to give it some security at the bottom. So for my purpose with the generator on there, it's not gonna rattle. It's the next thing I'm moving on to. Replacing the 37 by 12 and a half. Uh, 16 and a half rim tires with just some regular black steel rim trailer wheels and some radial tires. Um, the size is 235-80-R16. Um, these come out to like 31 inches, a little bit less. So it should drop the trailer by two and a half inches. Um, eight on six and a half bolt pattern. Um, I picked up a pair of these for 300 bucks shipped off eBay. It's a 7 8 uh, lug nut, and then I got some anti seize I'm going to put on there. All right, I just swapped out both the tires and wheels, I mean, and where I had the jack sitting at was just enough to get it off the pintle of my truck and it's probably hard to tell with the curve but it is slightly elevated in the front now whereas before it was slightly elevated in the back so with picking this diameter tire and the hitch with pintle on my truck that I chose um, should ride pretty darn level these tires definitely are smaller um, I don't think they look that bad though. I, I got the black rims on purpose so it wouldn't be silver or some crazy white on there. Cool. All right, last part of this is gonna be putting on this license plate bracket. 
don't really have a part number or anything for it, but uh, it's LED lights. And it's like a plastic bracket, so you just screw two in. <clears throat> they make it so whenever you mount it, you can also ground it at the same time. And then this is just going to run off of your trailer's running lights. Um, I'm going to mount it on the right hand side, right up in here. You can kind of see where I started marking some pilot holes to drill. <clears throat> and the wire I'm going to tap into, you kind of see where you can't see very well because of the lighting. Let's see. All right. It's a uh, wire number 21 your running lights so I'm gonna tap into that just run a wire over there should be good all right pulled my truck up plugged it in it's working I was missing the uh, pin for the kickstand in the back. It works out perfect. This is like the quick um, hitch pin from Harbor Freight Tools. This is the half inch model. Um, it's perfect with, with the pin put through. I mean, there's like no vibration. So when I get my generator on here, this should keep it one less thing from rattling. The chains on the trailer I got came with the hooks missing. And generally they're, they're pretty short anyway from reaching the truck when you put a pencil hitch and stuff on. So I picked up like a foot of chain, some quick like threaded chain links and some hooks. Um, I actually didn't pick these up. I just, stuff I had laying around. Um, Harbor Freight Tools, Tractor Supply, places like that, they'll have hooks and chain pieces for you. And you figure, Figure out the length you're gonna need for your truck, cut it so you don't have extra there, and put it together with these. Next thing I did was get rid of the chintzy chain and hook up, and I bought the Fastway zip breakaway cable from Tractor Supply. The SKU is from Tractor Supply is 1032001932. Uh, I got these on my other trailers for the electric breakaway kits and it works pretty good. Um, simple, it comes with like a key ring and it keeps this all neat so you don't have a cable and then this just latches anywhere in your truck. Should be enough to pull this lever um, to enable the hydraulic brakes, surge brakes that are on the trailer if for whatever reason it was to get away from you and come unhitched from the truck. All right, so I finished up my project here, getting this trailer to work with my truck. All the lights and everything are working properly. Um, just went and got the generator mounted up there. I had to have a local Kubota dealer help me just lift it on there. My tractor is not big enough. Still not perfectly level, but I have some ideas on how I'm going to fix that. But I uh, took it, got it up to like... 90 miles an hour on the highway no no shaking um, I need to do some work on the surge brake system it's not quite working the way that it should um, it might actually just be completely low on fluid in here or something else but um, I'll get that figured out and if it's more complicated than just putting fluid in there maybe I'll make a video about that too did some off-roading with it you can see it flung up some mud but yep very happy.